In this video, we're going to be automating with IronPython script controls. IronPython can be used programmatically to control Spafire from all the different menus and options you see throughout the application. Using scripting to control this allows you to create custom feature behaviors. IronPython has a lot of deep complexity to it, but this tutorial is designed for basic analysts. If you have some coding experience, it would be helpful, but it's not required. It's important to note that Iron Python is meant only for application automation and should not be confused with Python or Python data functions. It's currently not available on TIPCO Spotfire Cloud, though it is available on TIPCO Spotfire Cloud Enterprise as well as on-prem versions of Spotfire. Iron Python assemblies in the Spotfire API have many objects, classes, and properties. This page just shows a very basic sample of some of the different objects available in the document model subtree. This is only a sample of available objects. There's tens of thousands of objects actually available to you. Now I'm going to show you an example of why I might want to use Iron Python. In this example, I have a San Francisco airport map with different services shown on the map. I don't want my map to be too busy with labels, so I have them off. However, I have a toggle labels button here, which I can trigger through an action control in an Iron Python script. When I select down to a specific terminal, I may want to see how those specific restaurants are doing, so I can turn labels on with this action control. This action control is tied to an Iron Python script. I can see the available Iron Python scripts in the Scripts tab in Document Properties. I'm using this toggle label script. Here in the script, you'll see the different namespaces I've brought in from the Iron Python assemblies. I've then created a viz parameter, which is a script parameter, and I've assigned that down here. For a script parameter, you simply hit add and you type in the parameter name and you select the type of parameter it is. If it's a visualization, a table, a data table, different data types. This is a visualization and I want it to be on the rain analysis page and I want it to be for the airport map visualization. This is the rain analysis page and this is the airport map visualization. So I have that set up down here. I then set this variable i, which goes through the different layers in the visualization specified by my viz parameter. If the layer's name is SFO polygons, it'll check and see if the label visibility is set to none. If it is set to none, it'll change it to all. If it's not set to none, it'll set it to none. And this way, it'll toggle between the two. Once a script executes successfully, it'll print successful execution. At the bottom here, I can hit run script and I can see the text successful execution printed as well as the labels in the background turned on and off. In order to set this action control in the text area, I create an action control with this icon. I've created this action control that I've set as a link and I've tied it to this toggle labels iron python script and I've selected it with this viz parameter set to rating analysis and airport map. In this example, I have different charts on consumer vehicle efficiencies. I have this dropdown that allows me to change the different bar stacking. Again, in this analysis, I have some Iron Python scripts, such as this one for changing stack mode. I'll show you how I've added this to a text area. In the text area, I now use the add property control icon, and I've created this property control. I've selected it to be a drop-down list, but I could also use different ones like list box, input fields, or sliders. A drop-down list allows me to better control what the user is entering. I'm going to create this from scratch, so I'm going to delete this. To create from scratch, I'm going to create a new document property, and here I'm going to call the document property stack mode. Whenever this document property changes, I want it to run a script, so I'll hit the script button, and I'll select my stack mode script. Looking at the script, I see this namespace brought in, and instead of using a script parameter, here I've set viz to go through the different visuals in the active page and look for a visualization that has a title carline bar chart. This matches the visualization I'm targeting. It then sets another object as visual content and if the document properties for stack mode are set to zero, then it'll change the stack mode on the chart to none. If the value is one, it'll change it to a regular stack mode. And if it's 
2, it'll set it to 100% stack mode. I can change the different ways that the document property is changed, and for this I'll use fixed values. For stack mode none, that corresponds to a side-by-side -side chart. So I'll enter side-by-side -side here, and for the value, I'll put 0. For a regular stacked mode, it corresponds to a value of 1, and for a 100% stacked mode, it corresponds to a value of 2. Inside my script, I see none for 0, I see 1 for stacked, and I see 2 for 100% stacked. I'll hit OK here, and I'll close this edit, and now I can change the different stacked mode on my chart. If you search online, you'll be able to find the API reference with all the different objects, properties, and classes available to you. This shows you the full hierarchy. On the Iron Python scripting page on the TIPCO community, you can find more guidance on how to use Iron Python, a link to the API reference, and tons of different examples to prevent you from starting from scratch. Here's an article on how to set the bar chart stack mode in Iron Python. When I scroll down, I get the example script that I was able to use right into my analysis.